a major attack. Joining us now is Congressman Jared Moskowitz of Florida. Congressman, thank you for being with us. You wrote on social media a short time ago that you're asking Spe Speaker Mike Johnson to put the supplemental foreign aid package on the floor Monday night that supports our allies against Iran. Um, was there any indication that that could happen? Perhaps this would precipitate it, but what makes you think that he would change that now? Uh, already Ukraine yeah. is warning that they're losing to Vladimir Putin without that. And, of course, Israel was another piece, and a controversial piece, frankly, given a lot of domestic opposition to what Israel was doing in Gaza. No, thanks, Andrea. Thanks for, for, for having me on it. No, I mean, we're getting some word that the schedule may be changing for this week uh, in the House as far as the topics. There were five bills proposed this week dealing with trying to keep the Biden administration off of your appliances. So hopefully that's not what we'll be doing this week and we will be doing what we should have done months ago, which is standing by our allies uh, in the region, especially with the latest news with Iran's uh, disproportionate attack uh, on, on Israel. Now is the time to send the message to the world beyond just today that the United States will provide the necessary military and financial support uh, to Israel to make sure that uh, there aren't other additional players in the region that decide to get involved, as we know, right, with Hezbollah and the Houthis uh, and and the other uh, proxies in the region. And so, you know, this is a, a moment that many of us had hoped after October 7th we would not see. We would not see Iran striking or trying to strike within Israel proper, which had never happened before. So this is a moment uh, for Congress to show the world that we actually can function, which is different than what the 118th has shown the world uh, so far. And within the, the, the context of Democratic Party politics, Democratic base politics, obviously the president has been under a lot of pressure. He's lo lost a lot of support from progressives and others, from young people who are concerned about his support for Israel, his initial support, which was beginning to toughen up because of the consequences of the civilian casualties in Gaza. He, his language, his con conversation with Netanyahu, the fact that he said that Israel's conduct of the war was a mistake. Do you think that his solid ironclad, as he's put it, support for Israel under fire from Iran helps rebalance that? How does that complicate the 2024 conversation that the White House and the Democrats are going to be having? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that this is uh, a game changer to what the narrative has been for the last several weeks and months. This is now Iran. They're firing hundreds of drones, cruise missiles, potentially ballistic missiles uh, towards Israel. By the way, a ballistic missile could carry a nuclear payload, not in this instance because Iran doesn't have nuclear weapons yet. Uh, even though, as we know, they have a nuclear program and have been trying to achieve it. And so this disproportionate attack, which I think far exceeds any response uh, to Israel taking out uh, the folks uh, that were in Damascus that were part of the Revolutionary Guard and Hezbollah uh, that probably were involved with the planning of the October 7 attacks is the information we've been provided. Um, you know, this is uh, this is a totally different game changer. This is not the narrative that some of my colleagues to my left have been uh, talking about with obviously instant Palestinians and humanitarian aid. That being said, Andrew, I will tell you within the co congressional halls, um, it, there is still overwhelming support uh, for Israel, both in the Republican Party and in the Democratic Party, even with the isolationists on the Republican side and even with uh, some of the progressives uh, to my left. There is still dramatic support for Israel. So if the speaker decides now is the moment, which I believe it is, to do what we should have done months ago when we tried to support Israel, but we tied it to IRS cuts, now is the moment to stop the politics, to stop the games, and to show that the United States stands firmly with our ally Israel. And how concerned are you that this is going to pull the U.S. into the conflict, the wider conflict, besides air, U.S. air defenses? Well, I think as your military experts said earlier, I'm deeply concerned about the targets. This is not a targeted strike. So this is a disproportionate response. So if you're launching hundreds of drones, cruise missiles, and ballistic missiles, you're not just targeting government officials or military installations. And so in the event that any of these get through the defense systems, which 
Obviously, Israel has sophisticated systems, and the United States is, has assets in the region and are dramatically helping. And there are strikes from Iran that then hit Israel proper uh, and, and attack civilians. I'm deeply concerned about Israel obviously responding to make sure that no additional ballistic missiles or cruise missiles could be launched. Uh, and then, yes, of course, that could uh, drag the United States. And let's not forget that Israel has been dealing with Hezbollah for months now, hundreds of rockets from Hezbollah, right? The Houthis have been uh, have been launching attacks. In fact, the United States had to strike back to uh, to take away some of their capabilities. So some of this has been going on behind the scenes. It has not come to the forefront. But now, obviously, you know this is this is what we hoped would not happen after October seventh. Iran trying to take advantage uh, and launching what is clearly. Uh, a disproportionate uh, attack. I, I know you read that statement uh, that they're sending to the UN that, oh, this is it. it. You know, it's very easy when you launch hundreds of drones, ballistic missiles, and cruise missiles to then say the person you launched it at, oh, we're done, don't respond. Uh, we're going to have to see if they actually strike within Israel before we get there. And just a quick question. I know there was a briefing for the for the Hill. I assume that that was the Gang of Eight, or maybe the Intel, all of the Intel committees. Um, did you have any briefing as these days, in in the last couple of days on the Hill, uh, as we anticipated that this was going to happen, or something was going to happen? Yeah, we had some briefings uh, on the Foreign Affairs Committee, not to any near this detail. Uh, and I, as a member of Foreign Affairs, I expect we'll get a briefing probably sometime Monday when we return uh, back to town. Obviously, I'm sure the Gang of Eight's already been briefed and possibly the intel community, but Foreign Affairs has not yet had a secure briefing. And Steve Scalise, uh, of course, one of the leaders in the House, the number two in the House, Republican leadership has just announced, Congressman, that there will be a vote to support Israel. Do you think that there is enough support now, despite opposition from Donald Trump, to attach or Ukraine to that? Would this be for the original supplemental so that it could go through without needing another round of several weeks in the Senate, um, well, which did include there, Ukraine? Yeah, there could be, Andrea. I mean, you know, look, it'll depend on what Donald Trump tells the people in the House to do or not to do. I mean, let's not pretend that Russia and Iran are not linked at the hips. In fact, these drones that Iran is launching at Israel are the same drones that they give to Russia to launch at Ukraine. Uh, and so th this, there are all sorts of webs uh, that are tied between Iran and Russia, in addition to obviously oil, uh, on how Iran gets some of its money. And so, you know, this is a time to step up for our allies, especially because it shows in the absence of our leadership in the absence of doing what we're supposed to do we leave a vacuum for these things to happen and so yes now is the time to do both of those things how we get there right is probably unclear at the moment uh, but i'm happy to hear from uh the majority leader that they're we're going to be putting something on israel on the floor and i expect all my colleagues to stand with israel in its time of need against iran which is different uh, than uh, what we've been debating for the, since October 7th. And just to read his statement now, uh, the statement from Steve Scalise is, in light of Iran's unjustified attack on Israel, the House will move from its previously announced legislative schedule next week to instead consider legislation that supports our ally Israel and holds Iran and its terrorist proxies accountable. It's also a statement from the Speaker. Uh, I don't know if you've seen that, which says, as Israel faces this vicious attack from Iran, America must show our full resolve to stand with our critical ally. The world must be assured Israel is not alone. He continues by saying, I will continue to engage with the White House to insist upon a proper response. The Biden administration's undermining of Israel and appeasement of Iran have contributed to these terrible developments. So the blame game is already starting from the Republican side. If you want to res respond to that, Congressman. Yeah, look, now now is not the time for that, as there are missiles literally in the air. Um, that is always going to come. That's just the nature uh, of the beast, uh, no doubt about it. Uh, but look, I don't care about the speaker's statement on Twitter. I care about the speaker's actions. Now is his time to act, right? He passed up on that his first week as speaker when he tied Israel aid to the IRS. It killed the bill. That didn't go anywhere. That was a mistake. But now is his time to show why he wanted to be speaker. It's a leadership moment. 
Uh, and it's time to bring Democrats and Republicans together to stand by our ally Israel. This is his moment uh, to see if he can do it. Uh, and he's either going to sink or swim in this moment. Uh, again, Andrea, what we were supposed to be doing this week is we were supposed to be doing all of these appliance bills, like, you know, refrigerator freedom and, you know, liberty for appliances and air conditioning. It, it was a joke of a legislative schedule. So the fact that they have scuttled that, hopefully, and are now going to do what we should be doing, which is standing by our allies and showing our enemies that we can function. I applaud the speaker for, for that change, but now he's got to deliver. He's got to deliver not just in words, but in actions. Congressman Jared Moskowitz, thank